Welcome, welcome, Doug, and welcome, Manuel, to the show. Um, we're delighted that you're here. Um, nice to see you both virtually. Um, one day we will we'll see everyone in person, I hope. And um, look, just to set some things up, um, Doug, can you provide us some quick background on where the marketing industry is today on these transparency issues? Yeah, uh, what we've generally seen is some progress, uh, not as much as we'd hoped would have happened based on, on what was determined in 2016 by K2 and then confirmed by McKinsey in 2018. But we are seeing some progress. Uh, brands that are being very diligent in their process by including the transparency issues in their RFPs and requiring detailed explanations when an agency does not want to provide transparency are making much greater strides than those that are, are waiting on that issue and waiting for that discussion. The, the, the good news is that more and more people are aware of the issue so that they can make more intelligent decisions when they get into contract negotiations. Procurement in many brands is much more educated uh, in this area, but uh, what we've seen is that as, as, as many of the large brands are very sophisticated, Many mid-sized to smaller brands simply don't have the folks in-house that have this kind of expertise, and those at the at the agencies are going to do the best job they possibly can to maximize their returns on on their investments as well. So they're kind of outgunned uh, in in many instances. Uh, so we'd like to see a lot more progress, and that's why the ANA intends to re-enter the education mode of this again uh, shortly. You'll be seeing some things from them. Uh, trying to heighten the uh, heighten the awareness of this. One of the things that I've always found fascinating is that when we when we talk to a brand, we'll ask them quite often, "Have you seen? Have you read the K two report? Have you read the McKinsey report?" And a surprising number of people say, "We heard about it, but we haven't read it." You know, and that, that that's kind of a shock to me. Uh, that well, awareness is always right. step one, isn't it? Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So some progress, but not enough. And and do you think the focus will be more on those mid-sized brands, or or just in in overall awareness and so on? I think it's it, I think that that it's it's you know overall, but I, I, the A and A wants to focus in on those that need the most help, uh, and those are the mid-sized to the smaller brands. Interesting, interesting. Now I, I'm going to switch a little and ask Manuel um, a question because you were quite controversial um, in uh, in January when we were still having in-person think tanks. Um, and you, you, when we had a panel on this subject, you mentioned that we were now living in a post-transparency world. Now, perhaps it's semantics, perhaps um, it's, uh, it, it's an interesting observation, but can you talk a little bit, Manuel, about what you mean by that? Well, it, it really depends on how you define transparency and what you mean by it. But let me let me tell you what we're seeing in the market is that opt-in transactions. These are those transactions that are non-transparent. Uh, agency buys as principal, and also um, they they are for profit. So there is an undisclosed margin being made by the agency. These are these have become commonplace. They, I have not seen a, a single contract that doesn't have one. Uh, and uh, that doesn't have that language in there to allow for that. So what we're seeing is that uh, <clears throat> agencies no longer have to resort to the old models of agency volume bonuses, what we call ABVs, rebates, uh, rappels, whatever they were called around the world, and uh, uh, or to get free space <clears throat> and find a way to resell it to a smaller client that was that that wasn't as as uh, so, uh, worried about invoicey backup or anything like that. So uh, th that they, they no longer have to do that. All they have to do is they have to put a couple of paragraphs in the contract saying that uh, the client uh, has the option of saving a ton of money with these marvelous opt-in transactions and that they are going to be, um, they're going to, all they have to say is yes at the appropriate time or in some cases just a blanket yes in the contract. And uh, uh, we, then we go in and see that uh, these transactions, when we go back and audit, are perfectly compliant with contracts. They're no longer they're no longer behind the you know under the table or behind the curtain or whatever you want to call them. And uh, these are happening all the time. And uh, the problem with this is that 
agencies are pushing these more and more. They are they obviously want to increase revenues, and I don't blame them. In a way, uh, we've done it to ourselves. Uh, clients are extending payment terms. Some clients pay on 150 days. I heard of a pitch the other day where the client was asking for 360 days payment terms. I'm sure that was, I'm, I'm hoping that was just a posturing and a negotiation. And then of course, agency fees have been negotiated down um, throughout, the, throughout the last couple of decades. So what we're seeing is agencies trying to find a way of making extra revenue. And this has been a perfect way to do it. It's contract compliant. All the client is told they're going to save money and, uh, and uh, they're happening everywhere. It's, it's all the holding company contracts that, that we've seen happen. Now, um, what we're then seeing is that uh, clients, once that language is in there, have to learn how to live in a post-transparency or post-transparency uh, um, uh, you know, in the old sense uh, world and, and uh, learn how to manage that correctly. And that's what I meant by the fact that transparency is dead and that we now have to live in a post-transparency world. Once this language seeps into the contract, transparency so, is, is no longer a given. So let, let, me, let me try to clarify as best as I understand it. Are you saying that clients are somewhat complicit, marketers themselves are somewhat complicit, because of this language that is seeping in the contract that allows agencies to put in some of these conditions, which they're not examining enough to realize that, that the you know, agencies are finding another way that might be less transparent to make some money? Or are you saying that clients don't care? Is there something that, that or in between? It's, it's a combination of things plus a couple of other scenarios. You, you have clients who clearly don't understand what's in the contract because frankly, no one ever reads the contract. The, person, the only people who have read the contracts are uh, the people who prepare them, the attorneys, maybe some procurement. Seldom, very, very seldom does anyone in marketing, any marketing practitioner have any semblance or an idea of what's in the contract. So therefore, you can put anything you want in the contract, but if you don't live by it, it's just as good as, you know, another piece of paper in the drawer. So uh, th that's one issue. The second one is that uh, clients think in very short-term um, ways, and uh, they, they're told, oh, you're going to save 5%. Imagine, 5%, when the margin on these transactions could be up to 100%. And, uh, and uh, uh, then they approve these and probably in good faith, trying to think, you know, thinking that they're going to save some money without understanding what's happening in the background. So you have those people. Then you have other people who think their agency can do no wrong. And then anything the agency says goes. You have then other people who are very, very focused on, on just savings. They clearly understand what they're doing. They know that there, there's an issue here and that there's consequences to obtain to these transactions. But hey, they have to make their, their year end goal. They, they're looking for a promotion. And as long as they can work to that goal, um, anything long-term reveals in that. And uh, they approve these transactions. You know, Manuel has hit on, I think, what is the, the key problem here. Uh, it's, it's the adoption, you know, the, 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 you know, they're stuck on inertia. You know, the world was a nice, calm, easy place uh, for decades as agencies slowly got more sophisticated and found different ways to supplement their, their profits because the brands had pushed them down so much on, on a pure commission kind of a format. So they've gotten complacent, very much so. And in 2016, it kind of hit the fan and everybody woke up, including some of the major brands, and, and was a bit embarrassed because they were part of the process at the time. Uh, and, and they stepped in in the last five years. Uh, we've seen some efforts uh, of the various brands. But, but here's, the, here's the thing. Manuel is right that, uh, you know, we can negotiate the best contract in the world. Uh, and then that contract invariably gets stuck in a drawer and no one pays attention to it. Some, some brands that are spending hundreds of millions of dollars don't even do legitimate audits. They just stick, they stick the, the contract in the drawer and that's it. You know, procurement did a good job. Legal did a good job. But it just sits there. And, and uh, largely because, as Manuel said, they're not measured on whether they did a good contract. They're not measured on any of that. They're not measured at the, on the results of an audit 
when an audit is done. Their, their, keep, their KPIs are very different on how they earn their bonuses and, and, the, and the rest. So it is not at top of their mind. In addition, they're not there long enough. I mean, very often, you know, we always read the, you know, the press about the average lifespan of a, of a CMO is, is relatively short in the big scheme of things. So, so, so a lack of, of follow-up. I mean, that, that would, to me is the biggest thing is the lack of follow-up. The, the other thing that, that I, I think uh, is the case here is a false promise. They, you know, they, they claim that they're going to save you money, but there's no benchmarking. There's no benchmarking for you to use to see whether or not they've actually saved you money over other advertisers or other brands, or whatever it might be. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated right now with media buying because a lot of agencies have made commitments to media that they no longer are going to be able to sell through their clients because their clients are canceling media. You know, I don't know what the deals they have with the media companies are, but I bet a lot of those so-called principal deals are going to come to bite them because they're going to be holding media that the media companies are going to say, you owe me, and they're not going to be able to sell it to. So there's, that's the dark side of this principal buy structure that may come to bite the agencies in the end as well. We don't know. Uh, but the point is that, as Manuel said, there's, there's all, a lot of hard work is done, and then the whole thing is stuck in a drawer. They're not measured on it. The CFO doesn't even look at it. I mean, rarely ever seen a CFO even review one of these contracts. They don't follow it up with their boards. They, it, it's the largest spend they make, other than people in brick and mortar, yet it is, it is the, some of the most sloppy uh, compliance efforts that I've seen. Well, it, it sounds to me that part of the issue is that there are a number of different roles and different functions within the overall marketing organization or the overall C-suite that aren't always on the same page. That, that might be one of it. But, but how, how do you... How do you break through? I mean, Manuel said that procurement people are obviously concerned about these things. You're mentioning maybe a CFO doesn't look at it. Does it have to be elevated to be a, a, a bigger corporate issue? Ultimately, um, it amazes me that it hasn't. Uh, but marketing dollars, if I'm a CFO, I'm very comfortable when I can count things very precisely. So I know how many pencils I bought, how many employee benefits I had to pay, what my rent was. It's, it's, very, it's, 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 it's very objectively calculated. That's not true in marketing. Marketing true. is a mystery. You know, it's the, the old joke about which half is wasted thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not, it's not a comfortable place. So, but the, 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 the CFO is astute enough to know that I've got to market. I've got to do this. I've got to trust my CMO. I've got to trust, you know, whatever the market is. And I've got to do whatever my competitors are doing. You know, we've always seen that in the marketing business you know, as long as one brand goes off tangent on some kind of strange media, everybody just follows. It's, it's a bunch of lemmings. So, so there's, a, there's an inertia there that is very hard for CFOs to, to really get their hands on and figure out. Well, I, I would say that uh, we really, uh, to, to your point here, uh, Deborah, we, we do see a very, very distinct approach or, or and, and or between what we see with marketing and what we see with procurement. Procurement, you have you get two types of people. The ones who just want to make sure the cost is the lowest, whatever the consequences. Then you have other people. Uh, unfortunately, we have clients like that who think in, in long term, uh, in, in with long term strategies, in, in, in terms of what's going to happen with this cycle and the next and the next. And those people are also concerned about pricing, but they're also concerned about relationships and having integrity in the, in the system. Uh, and those people understand what, what's happening with transparency and, uh, and they, they know what they, they need to do either to get the lowest price or to have integrity in the process for the long term. Then on the marketing side, it's just, they just want to make sure their brand, they get, you know, they get good measures for their brand, they get their shares off, they sell more product, whatever. They trust their agency. They're still stuck in the 1970s as far as how they, they think their agency operates, which is no longer the case, of course. And, uh, and they really would like procurement and thus auditors to go away. They just want to be left alone and, be, and do whatever they do before. So from a contract and transparency perspective and also from an auditing perspective, which is part of the transparency process, you have an issue that you have procurement trying to get things done and marketing saying, leave me alone, I want to keep on working like I've been working for the last 30 years.